Welcome to another Outside the Box tutorial video. I'm Rachel Tessman from StampYourArtOut.com and as I do each month, I'm here once again to share with you how to make a few alternate projects that I created using the contents of the December 2016 Another Great Year Paper Pumpkin Kit from Stampin' Up! This is what came in the kit. A fabulous bunch of supplies for making a mini photo album. There are pre-punched sturdy papers, and window sheets with fun designs on them, self-adhesive die cuts, washi tape to help with decorating, you have the rings of course, and you have the directions to help you in assembling your journal. And rather than the usual stamp set and mini ink pad, this month's kit is unique. It has a marker and a rotary stamp. This way you can use the brush end to ink up the stamp, which has some great scrapbooking images, and you can use the writing end for adding your personal journaling to the pages. I didn't use my supplies in the kit to make the actual album to show you, because what I do is share even more ideas with you that you can create with the kit contents. That way those of us getting the kits can go beyond and create even more. But Stampin' Up! has a great video that you can view showing you step by step how to put this journal together, and it has some great page layout ideas. If you watch this video and discover that you'd like to give Paper Pumpkin Kits a try, you can click on the subscribe to Paper Pumpkin link below in my video description. It's $20 a month, which includes the shipping, and you can subscribe for many or even just one month. There's no obligation, so I encourage you to give it a try. I offer new ideas for each month's kit, and if you subscribe with me as your demonstrator, I send you even more ideas each month that are exclusive to my subscribers only. I'm diving right in because I'm excited to share. Keep in mind, most of the extra tools and products that I use in this video can be purchased directly through me. They're listed below in my video description and linked to my online store. Also, keep in mind that you can click in the middle of my video and it will take you directly to my blog post where I've shared even more information about Paper Pumpkin Kits of Creativity. Also a great way to get free products during our celebration promotion and close-up photos of the projects that I will create during this video. Let's get started. One fun thing about being one of my subscribers is that every once in a while you get a random gift and I just sent out about a week ago some supplies to each of my subscribers. I gave them some enamel dots, which are little self-adhesive sticker things, some coordinating cardstock for that, some silver cardstock because of course we have the silver stickers that come in the kit, and then of course we had to have a note card and envelope because this kit doesn't make cards so I wanted to introduce people who don't know about these fabulous things that we have note cards and envelope sets and then I also gave them a die cut image from our soon to be new it probably is now by the time I published this video but our detailed dragonfly thinlet dies which um, will debut in our occasions catalog on January 4th and you, they either got this big one this set of um, five dragonflies or this small one here. The enamel dots come in different color families, so if you are interested in getting them, um, they come in brights and regals and subtles. And this is how the note cards and envelopes come in a packet of 20. For my first project that I'm going to share with you, I'm going to use the, these three items that I gifted my subscribers, the elements, the coordinating card stock, and then the dragonfly die cut image. To put the dragonfly image on, you can use a fine tip glue pen, you can use the Tombow glue, you can use glue dots. Um, this is what I'll be using today. I'll also have my trusted scissors, my paper snip scissors, my snail adhesive. I brought in a ruler. We don't have this in the online store, but you'll need a ruler and you'll need a paper trimmer. From the kit, you'll need your pen, you'll need the rings, you'll need a few of these pages. I think I have 13 of them. And then um, you'll need some uh, a front and a back for the booklet that we're going to make. Um, you'll need the silver stickers. And then we're going to add something to the inside of our booklet. We're not making an album. Um, I chose not to make an album with my kit because I'm way behind on all the albums that I already have that I'm working on. So I just, I couldn't make one more album. <laughs> but I need a perpetual calendar. So we're going to be making um, one of those with our booklet. And it's a great tool that you can use over and over again year after year. So for that, you'll need either like lined paper that you've already got in your stash, or if you have a printer, you'll need like printer paper and your printer so that you can print out some lined paper. Paper. Um, my printer actually takes cardstock, so I can take and run my cardstock through because it doesn't curve it like this. It actually just brings it, it barely curves the cardstock, so it, it's really nice for printing on cardstock. 
Um, if you don't have any of those options, you can actually use this stamp that comes in the kit because there is a line, it's a dotted line, and then on the side you have these numbers. So you can get the same effect if you want to work a little bit harder and use that. Or you could, of course, go back to the old paper and pencil way where you take a ruler and draw straight lines. And I'll show you that step in a minute. You're probably all getting confused. So let me go ahead and get started. The first thing that you'll want to do is take your 13 papers and kind of figure out ahead of time which order they're going to go in. I've already done that. I want a front and a back, so I'm going to title this Another Great Year. And get the little rings through there. After we've done that, we're going to go ahead and cut this cardstock down. And let's cut it into one and three quarter inch strips. You'll need two of those. Just set that aside for now. And we can come in and you know what, I'm going to use this side of the cutter instead because it's easier to hold on to with my left hand. And I'm going to go to the 7 8 inch mark. So not quite an inch. I want them a little narrower. And I'm going to cut out 12 of these. And now I'm numbering these pieces 1 through 12 and each piece is going to go on a different page to represent that month. Again, this is a perpetual calendar. If you don't know what those are, it's basically a calendar that you can use year after year and it just has um, numbers and lines on it. It doesn't associate the um, numbers with a day of the week. So when you go from year to year, you can keep looking on what happened on the 5th of February. Um, you know, who was born, who had an anniversary, who got married. And so you just keep track on this perpetual calendar so that you can recognize and give cards when birthdays, anniversaries, that sort of thing take place. So now we've got all of those pieces ready to go. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write on the side here, because these are going to be sticking out as little tabs on the book, um, I'm going to write the actual name of the month. So I'll use the writing end, because again, your marker comes with two tips. So now we can take and we can write on here, January. By the way, don't worry about your handwriting. It's something that you need to do more often. Everyone does. Um, your family, your, your family members, your loved ones need to see that more often, especially if you're a scrapbooker. Don't, don't print everything on the computer. Um, add journaling to your pages. It's more important to see that handwriting than you know, and your handwriting is more beautiful than you really think it is. So believe me, it's true. Um, I wanted to tell you that there's a reason why we have the extra ones, twos, sixes, sevens, zeros, and that's because you're going to be, um, if you're doing the kit the way it instructs, you're probably going to put 2016 or 2017, um, something like that, on the front of your book. So that's why the added numbers for those particular digits. Okay, so next we're going to take our dragonfly and we're going to line up all our pages here on the front. We're going to slip our dragonfly underneath so that it looks like it's in a great position. I think I want it right about there. We'll lift it up and we'll add a little bit of fine tip glue underneath the dragonfly. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to start cutting um, these stickers. And I'm, I'm going to use one of my used sheets here. I've, I've been cutting my silver circles in half. You can do that with your paper trimmer or you can do that with your scissors, however you want to do it. And they don't have to be perfect, perfectly cut in half. So you're going to do that to all six of your silver circles. My dragonfly is nearly dry now, so um, I debated back and forth. I wasn't sure about these elements, if I was going to add them to the window sheet for my dragonfly or to the actual dragonfly. And I think in this case, I'm actually going to put, him, put them on him. So we're going to go ahead and add the circle, the large circle and the small circle to the dragonfly body, just as a little accent. And then um, I've got a heart and a star left over. I know I'm going to use the heart for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and add these little stickers, 
heart stickers first here and there. And then on the outside cover, I'm going to go ahead and add this heart right about there. So there we go. Now we have a multi-layer cover to our little perpetual calendar. Um, and you can decorate yours however you wish. That's just my little version right there. And then um, as we turn, we're going to open to the first page spread here. Through the magic of videotaping, I can show you what I've done next on the inside of my pages here. I've taken these half circles and I've started adding them. And I'm adding them kind of spaced apart evenly. I've um, changed the distance between them by one inch all the way. So from here, from the top of this one to the top of this one is an inch. Same thing here. From the top of this one to the top of this one is an inch. There's another inch. So um, I kind of figured out, first of all, what the distance was. And it's seven inches here. This whole side here is seven inches. And I wanted my um, pieces to be equally spaced. So I kind of figured out if I moved to approximately that spot, I would have an equal space of those six different half circles. So that magic number is actually 3 8 inches. So if we go to the next page here to add the next one down, we're going to go to the 4 and 3 8 inch mark with the top of that half circle. We'll just measure it here quick to make sure it's about right. We'll shift it just a little bit. There we go. And then the next one would be at the 5 and 3 8 inch mark. And it might help if I kind of turn it this way. So we'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3 8 of an inch about there. And now you can see from the first page to that page there, it's about the same. It doesn't have to be exactly, but they're about the same distance from the top or the bottom edge. And I've got six tabs in there. So this is January, February, March, April, May, June. And then I'll go ahead and I'll do the rest of these half circles. So July through December. Okay. So now we've got the tabs all evenly spaced. And we're ready to label each of them with their corresponding month. So now we'll just come in with the snail adhesive and we'll make sure that our tab is sticking out the distance that we need it to, depending on your writing. So if you have really, really thick writing and you just did J-A-N, then you'll want your tab to stick out a little bit further than mine. But um, we're going to go ahead and put some adhesive on the back here. And we'll just add that in. And now we have all the tabs in there. They look so great. They're so lined up. Yay! Helps to start with a ruler. <laughs> okay, so now the, the last step is to add any decorations. You could do a photo on this side or whatever. But I'm going to go ahead and add some paper that I had printed out onto my, um, my typing paper, my, my copy paper. Okay, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and add these sheets to the inside. Now I also printed them out onto some smoky slate cardstock and some whisper white but I find that the white um, is a little bit different our whisper white is a little bit different than the white that comes in the kit so for my white I'm going to be using the typing paper and for other pages I might be using the smoky slate it's your choice really and again you have the other options you have you know using note cards or any lined paper that you have at home or this other option that I was telling you about where you can take and you know stamp out the one and a line the two and a line or even use the ruler and a pencil and draw those out yourself so I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling those and here is the finished perpetual calendar. Again, there is room for adding photos or other decorations. But what I may do is just keep it this simple 
And when I'm on a month, let's say I'm on December, I'm going to just turn that back, stick that on my desk, and have all my names written on there, reminding me who needs birthday cards, who needs anniversary cards. So I'm pretty excited about it. I don't know, super simple, super easy. I want to tell you too that as I was filming this video, as I was recording it, um, on the Paper Pumpkin fan club on Facebook, Lisa Fleming shared a version of this um, that she had created. We didn't even talk beforehand. Hers, um, she called hers a birthday card organizer. She is um, specific to the year though too, so she has a little calendar on the opposing page. I think the calendar is on this side and then the list of numbers is on this side so she can write the names next to it. Um, I asked her if she had pockets too because um, I thought with it's a birthday card organizer, maybe there's um, areas for cards to go but she said no and that was something that I had thought of too but if you do that the book is going to get really bulky I mean it's already nice and thick as it is so if you were to add a pocket and then slip in three or four cards in every month you can imagine how bulky that would get so I would just recommend um, if you're doing a perpetual calendar or a birthday card organizer for the year 2017 that you would just have this thing sitting next to your box of cards ready to go next project when I first opened my, my kit, another great year paper pumpkin kit, I noticed that this cardstock that comes in the kit is not only nice and stiff, it's a good cardstock quality, but when it is compared to our note cards um, in our note card envelope packages, it's the same exact size. So if we were to fold this in half, it would become a card that fits into the envelopes from that note card pack. I'm going to make a note card for us using that paper. We're going to use the stamp and trimmer again. We're going to use a paper snips, um, some smoky slate cardstock. I'm bringing out some dimensionals. And if you have pa past paper pumpkin kits, then you probably have some of these little foam sticky tape things on hand already. In fact, the best one for this is the one that we got, I think it was last month or the month before, the earth, these tiny, tiny little dimensionals. I love them. So um, if you have any of those, bring those out. And then any ribbon that you want to use. And this is one of my favorite ribbons that is going to be available or is available, I'm guessing it's already available by the time I get this video done, um, January 4th through March 31st. It's in the Celebration catalog, and you get these two, so the vanilla and gold and the white and silver, for free with a $50 order during that time of this year. So I'm, we're going to go ahead and use that metallic ribbon, and then um, from the kit, of course, we're going to be using one of the sheets, we're going to use the marker and the rotary stamp and some of our stickers and some of our tape. So let's go ahead and start with this piece here and our trimmer and we're going to score that in half. This piece is seven inches by five inches so half of the seven is three and a half. So we'll put this in our trimmer at three and a half inches and score. Now you might be saying to yourself, well gee, that's going to be really um, stupid with a hole on both sides, right here and here. But I have a fun little trick that I learned with ribbon years back when I, when I was new to becoming a demonstrator. Um, you need a hole in order to add um, this ribbon. Let's see here, let me get the scissors. We're going to just trim that up. So let me show you this trick. Okay, here's the front of our card. We're going to start from the front and we're going to wrap our ribbon to the back and we're going to poke it through this hole. And then we're going to do the same thing with this piece. And you'll, if you'll notice, here I've got the ribbon coming through. I'm winding it around. I'm coming to the back again. I'm going to go in through that hole and I'm going to go out the front so that I have one ribbon on the top and one ribbon on the bottom. Okay, It's just a, a nice way to keep the ribbon in place. So if you're one of those people that doesn't like to use the glue dots or um, you know something underneath your ribbon but but yet your, your ribbon isn't tight enough when you tie it and sometimes it slips around. This is a great little trick for adding ribbon. So again you need a punch, a hole punch, and you just punch a hole and this is the way you wind it through. And then you're going to take these two pieces and you're just going to do an overhand knot. And there it is. Our ribbon is now on the front of our card and we can trim that up. We could tie a bow if we wanted. Sometimes you have to have this a little looser 
just to make sure that it's nice and firm. Um, the larger the hole, the wider the ribbon sometimes too. This is probably the narrowest I would get with my ribbon. Um, I might even go a little bit larger. In fact, on some of the sample cards that I've created, I've got some wider ribbon on this. But I love this ribbon so very much, so I'm using it. We're going to trim that off. And then we can decorate the front. Now what about the hole on this side? Well, most people don't look at the back of their cards, so um, why don't we just take some of that smoky slate cardstock and cover up the hole? I forgot to mention you'll also need the snail adhesive on this. So we're going to go ahead and add that piece right in there, like that. So now we have a card that has no more holes. <laughs> so let's go ahead and decorate it. And there we go. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> All right, and now let's go ahead and see the other samples that I've made. Let's see if I can set this aside here really quick. We'll put a block on it. Okay, so this card here, done in a very similar um, little pattern. I used the polka dot paper, and the ribbon is the white organza ribbon. It's a lot thicker, has a really nice decoration on each edge. And then I took the arrow and split it in half for the inside. This one here is using some of our silver satin ribbon. Again, a thicker ribbon. Covers up that hole a lot better. And then I took some of the smoky slate, um, stamped a message from another greeting uh, from the dragonfly set, actually, that matches the dragonfly dyes. And then this card, I used some of the extra numbers because, of course, you have lots of zeros and you have, um, I think you have a couple extra twos, a six and the ones. Um, so 16, I thought a sweet 16 card. This is using our ruched ribbon. I think that's the flamingo color. <laughs> and then this one I thought was fun. I've seen a lot of people making little sunshines with their stickers. So you take half the half... Um, half silver, or the, I'm sorry, the half uh, crushed curry circles from this sheet right here, and then you just take and place a bunch of the little edge stickers around. Now you could use, I think some people have been using these, but what I did is I just trimmed um, some excess off on the edges and cut them into little tiny strips. And that's using that silver metallic ribbon again. So let's spread those out so you can see them all. So some fun note card ideas. Are you planning to be or are you already a Paper Pumpkin subscriber? Right now Stampin' Up! is holding a fantastic promotion called Celebration. Click on the link below to learn more and see how you can earn free product through your Paper Pumpkin subscription. Thank you for watching. It builds creativity to think outside the box. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you can catch more Paper Pumpkin videos that I've shared using past kits and more that I'll share with future kits. Also, be sure to visit my blog at stampyourartout.com so that you can view close-up photos of these projects and see photos of other Paper Pumpkin kit ideas. If you're watching my video on YouTube, look for the links in my description below. And to see some exclusive project ideas, Get your Paper Pumpkin subscription started with me as your demonstrator. I hope you all enjoyed this video tutorial. Now I'd like you all to go and stamp your art out. Bye bye.